I want to welcome everybody once again to Sunday School here at Brister on Facebook, and I'm glad you joined in. It's turned to hot weather this week, but I hope everybody's doing good, and it's good to have you here this morning. Once again, I'm going to go straight to prayer request, and this has been a busy week, especially for my family. My wife, Lisa, has been in the hospital. She had gallbladder surgery. It was successful, and this is Thursday evening that this is being taped, and she's back home now. And we really appreciate all the prayers, the texts, the emails, people calling. It really means a lot. It means so much to be part of a praying church. Thank you very much for, for your care and concern. And we have some others. Brother Jeremy's grandmother, Miss Betty Dunn, has been placed under hospice care, and she's not doing good right now. We need to keep Miss Betty in our prayers in the days to come. Our good friend Andy Rowe, and I've mentioned Andy every week since we started this. He's been on our prayer request, uh, on our prayer list for some time now. He's been placed under hospice care, and he had a surgical procedure done today, and I hadn't heard about that, but Andy's having a tough go of it. We need to pray for Andy, for Kathy, for all their family right now. Also, pray for people in nursing homes and hospitals. I got a first-hand view of that this week, not being able to go see your loved one, being able to see Lisa or your grandmother or whoever that is in one of these facilities, and that's tough. That's real tough. Pray, pray for people that are in these facilities. Pray for their families that can't go in to see them. Pray for the COVID virus situation. I got word just a little, just a minute ago that possibly schools are being moved back, the start of that. A lot going on with that. We need to keep that in our prayers. With that in mind, I'm going to ask my good friend Jared McNeil to come pray for us once again. I appreciate him taking the time to come do it. I'll let Jared go ahead. Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. God, we just thank you for the opportunity to, to worship you. God, to to call out your name in times of need. And God, we're, we are a nation in need. We're a people in need. God, we know that, that you hear us. And God, we, we're asking uh, mighty things this morning. God, we just pray for those that were mentioned by Tim for prayer requests. God, we just uh, lift up Miss, Miss Dunn and Brother Jeremy and the family as um, the time approaches. And God, we just pray for peace and comfort and they would feel your love. God, for for brother andy rowe god and the family god just uh, be with them in a special way through the next days and weeks and god just uh, draw them up hold them close let them know that you love them more than ever before god for the for the ones that are in nursing homes hospitals today god those that are are outside those walls god we can't be there but we know you're there with them and we pray that that all of our loved ones wherever that facility might be feels you this morning God, we just uh, ask that you would be with our church as we continue to, to reach out outside these walls. Uh, the virus has uh, got us. It's got some in their homes. It has some afraid to, to go out. But God, we know that you can go inside their homes. You can be where they are. And God, we just pray that, that through this, that you continue to draw people to you. God, we pray for our nation today. God, we just know that our nation needs you more than ever for our leaders. God, through, through not just the virus, but the, the outrage in our country, God, we just pray that, that your hand be felt. And God, we, we do pray that you would heal our land. We're asking you to heal our land today, God, uh, like you never have before. God, as we, as we listen to the Sunday school this morning, God, we just pray that what Tim has to say touches each and every heart that's listening god that you would be you would be there god that you would draw them close to you god that if there's if there's one lost today that's listening to this message god today would be the day that they would come to salvation they would accept you as their savior and eternity in heaven with you god i just ask now that you would forgive me of my sins and where i do fail you each and every day in jesus name i pray amen Thank you once again, Jared. I appreciate you taking the time to come down here straight from work and pray. And once again, I'm blessed to go to church with a praying bunch of people. And, and I really appreciate that. 
In, in our class this morning, I'm going to talk about something. And first off, I want to say I, I'm thankful to have the people in our church that don't normally come to my Sunday school class but have their own Sunday school class. I'm thankful for them listening in, but I'm also thankful for people that are outside of our church that have had the opportunity to listen in. And with that in mind, I've had a couple of individuals who don't go to church here ask me about something that I've mentioned several times in my Sunday school lessons these last few months. And maybe I should have explained it a little bit more, but I'm going to explain it tonight and or this morning, and I'm, then I'm going to see what we can learn from it. But first off, in Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 4, and I've told you all this before, we're blessed to have a lot of kids in this church, and I mean a lot of kids, blessed to have parents that bring their kids to church. But I want to read this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. It says, At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And like I say, I, I'm blessed to go to church with a lot of little kids. And during some of my Sunday school lessons that I've taught in the last, once again, last several months, I mentioned, mentioned our Awana program here at Brister. And if you're not a part of the church, that name kind of catches you by surprise. But we have a program here for children, and like I say, the name of it is Awana. And it is a very successful program, and it is very successful here at Brister Baptist Church. Just briefly, Gina Phillips has headed this program up since the start of it, and everybody will tell you that Gina has done an outstanding job. She continues to do an outstanding job, and we're blessed to have Gina doing that. With that in mind, Gina will be the first to tell you that she's blessed to have a lot of people that help her with this program, and she'll tell you she couldn't do it without all the volunteers, and there are a lot of volunteers. We have everybody from, from a senior saint like, like Miss Louise, she's, she's worked Awana for many years, all the way down to teenagers. We have Adam Graves, we have Addison McNeil, that they have help with it, and everybody in between. And it takes a lot of people, and that's one reason it is so successful. But the goal of Awana is to bring children to Christ and their motto, and I love this motto that Awana has, it's reach kids, equip leaders, change the world for God. And that's a great motto to have. And Awana, and like I say, the name kind of catches you by surprise, Awana, A-W-A-N-A, -A, means approved workmen are not ashamed. Once again, that's a great thing, that, that name right there. And it's based on 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And I learned this year that 1 and 2 Timothy, along with Titus, the book of Titus, are known as Paul's pastoral letters. It's letters that were written to pastors to give them guidance, to, to give them direction in spreading the word of God. And it's good advice for our Awana workers. And like I say, it's based on 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And I'm going to read that right now. I should have turned to it already. But 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 tells us, Be diligent to, pres to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. It says, be diligent, do your best. The original word here was be zealous in spreading the word of God. Don't be ashamed to spread the word of God. Take it to these children. And that's a great thing to do. B 
be glad to teach, but it says by dividing the word of God. This means by studying the word. Get in there, divide it up, work it out, figure it out. And that's what our Awana workers do. And once again, that's why this program is so successful at Brister. Now, just to explain it just a little bit, during the school year, when Awana's in a, in a session, every week at Brister, there's approximately 100 Awana kids here on the hill, approximately 35 to 40 workers, and it takes that many workers. Worldwide, the Awana program reaches 3.7 million kids a year, 470,000 workers, and it's in approximately 47,000 churches. Originally, it started in 1941, but it really got organized and got going strong by 1950. And basically, these Awana workers, they, they spread the word. It's the same thing that we hear in the sanctuary every Sunday. Salvation is a gift from God. There's nothing we can do to earn it. We are saved by the shed blood of Jesus Christ who died for our sins and salvation is obtained by having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what these Awana workers start teaching these kids at a very young age. We hear about early childhood education that's taking place right here at Brister and they're teaching them the Bible here. Each week, the Awana program starts with a meal and we've been blessed from the start to have some good cooks. We've got some great cooks here at Brister. These kids get a good meal every week at the Awana program. They then have a general assembly and they say the pledge to the Bible, to the Christian flag, to the American flag, and to the Awana flag. And that's a great thing that they do. They have these pledges every week and then they have a group prayer. After this, the kids divide up with the different teachers. They go in different directions. They have Bible study and they play games. Once again, this has been a very successful program at Brister and many kids, many times Lisa's come home from Awana and told me a kid was saved tonight. Many kids have been saved because these Awana workers make the effort to come up here and spread the word. They divide the word with these children and no doubt about it, it's a great program and something this good we need to really look at. There's a lot that we can look at here and we say the program's great, but we can apply it to our life. And that's why I read that first scripture. Jesus says, humble yourself before the Lord. I'm gonna read a very similar scripture right now, but it's in Luke, it's in one of the gospels. And turn in your Bibles to Luke 18. Luke chapter 18. And this is Jesus talking, and this is why I wanted to read this. Luke chapter 18, verse 15, it sounds familiar. It says, then they also brought infants to Jesus that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. So, what's Jesus saying here? The disciples, people were bringing kids to Jesus. The disciples kind of rebuked them, said, said, Jesus is too busy for these kids. Jesus said, uh-uh. He <laughs> said, I'm not too busy for these kids. He said, you bring those kids to me. And he says... You be like those kids. You have a childlike faith. You trust in me like these kids trust in me. Have a childlike faith. And you got to look at that and go, well, you know, my faith, I got a deep, strong adult faith and everything. Jesus said, you don't need that. You just have a childlike faith in me. That's what I'm asking of you. So how do we have a childlike faith this Sunday morning? How do we have a faith like these little children that totally trusted in Jesus? Well, the first thing is we need to be humble. And Jesus tells us how to do that. We're going to go back to Matthew chapter 18. I, I'd read this before, but in Matthew chapter, eight, 
chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Therefore, whoever humbles himself as a little child is the greatest in kingdom of heaven. You've got to humble yourself to have this childlike faith. You've got to put Jesus first in your life. And not only that, not only put Jesus first in our life, let's humble ourselves and put others ahead of us in our lives. Turn in your Bible, if you would, to Philippians chapter 2. A lot of great stuff in Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 tells us, Let each of you look out, not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Humble yourself. Put others in front of you. Look after their interest. Pray for them. And I tell you, when people are praying for you, you really feel it. To have a childlike faith, the first thing you need to do is humble yourself. So what else do we need to do to have a childlike faith that Jesus talks about? We must be totally dependent on God, not dependent on him just when we need him. We need to be dependent on God all the time. If you turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, we're told, Matthew 6, verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. You need to be dependent on God first. Don't go to God after everything else has failed. If all else fails, go to God. Go to God first. Be dependent on him. Brother Eric talked about that last week when he read out of, out of the, uh, Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 takes this a little bit further. It says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Y'all, we need to be dependent on God. He's already said he's going to be with us. He's going to be there. Seek him first. To have that childlike faith, we need to be dependent on God. Next thing, it's one thing to be dependent on God, but we need to be submissive to God's will. We don't have, need to have a, pre, uh, a prepared agenda, sort of have it all mapped out the way we want, want it to go. We need to let it go the way God wants it to go. If you'll turn over to Romans, and I mentioned Romans a week or two ago, that some people have read some very encouraging verses out of this Bible, and it's very good. But it says to be uh, submissive, and in Romans 12, 2, it tells us, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be submissive to God. Don't conform to what's going on out there in the world today. You know, that, that's easy to conform to. Go to God. Be submissive to his will, his perfect will. And that's a, that's a great thing to have is his perfect will. In John, the book of John, chapter 14, this is Jesus talking, and it's just a brief verse. John chapter 14, verse 15 tells us, if you love me, keep my commandments. Just, just if you love me, and this is Jesus talking, keep my commandments. It's that simple. To have a childlike faith, be submissive to God. Let him be the one that you conform to. And finally, to have a childlike faith, and, and this reminds me of a lot of Brister kids, we need to be curious. You know, we, we need to be curious about what's in this book, about what goes on in these walls uh, every Sunday, every Wednesday night. In Matthew 6, and I read this a, a minute ago, but I want to read it again. Matthew 6, verse 33. Once again, it tells us, but seek first the kingdom of God. Seek. Be looking for, and you come up here on a Wednesday night, these kids are seeking. They're looking. They want to know. Once again, I mentioned Lisa a little while ago. She come home, and she'll tell me questions that these kids ask that are amazing for a kid that age. And that's the way we need to be. We need to seek what's going on. best way to do that is come to Sunday school. Come to church. Come be a part of the Awana program. Seek God's word. Seek his will in your life. 
When you do that, you'll have a childlike faith. Now, like I said, we're blessed to have a great Awana program here at Brister, and we can take a lesson from these children, and we need to develop a childlike faith just like they have. God will bless us just like he blessed these little children. And like I say, it's a great thing here at Brister. I'd like to say I know when our WANA program's going to start this fall, but with the COVID, I don't know any of the plans right now. But if you know any kids that are interested, would like to come, they'd sure love to have them here at Brister. And I want to say once again, we'd love to have you at Brister. Come be a part of it, experience that childlike faith. We'd love to see you here. I'll see you next week. Thank you very much.